me now is Emma Wade-Smith. She's the new British Trade Commissioner for North America and the Consul General uh, and joins me now. Uh, Commissioner, good to, good to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, and first of all, congratulations on taking up the new post. Your predecessor was a was a firm favourite on this programme and we hope you will become one too. Let's just deal with COVID and the restrictions and the new things. We have a lot of other things to talk about, but I want to get rid of this. It is, you may have just heard my conversation with Scott McLean and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you for the definitive answer on that. But it is good news. I mean, look, I've just been Googling. I've no idea. If you're going to Scotland via London Heathrow, I've no idea what the official position is, but that's another story for another day. More important, it is good news that the... Uh, the, 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 the pre-departure test has gone. I agree, Richard. Um, firstly, it's great to see you again and uh, I look forward to being a regular guest on your show. Um, it is, of course, really welcome news, not just for businesses, you know, the thousands of businesses and, and the hundreds of thousands of people who work for businesses uh, in the UK, the US and Canada, um, but also for families. And you know, if you recall a couple of months ago being at JFK Airport, as we welcomed in those first transatlantic flights. Um, you know, that was a wonderful, heartwarming moment for people. And at the end of the day, you know, business is done by people. Um, and so it's, it's a great thing for, for today to hear that. So let's, let's talk about the new rules have just come in in, uh, in, in the UK for uh, takeovers, the investment, new investment rules, complicated rules, which basically say that certain th 17 areas of the economy have to now, if you're doing a transaction concerning them, they're, they're every, and some of them are obvious, AI, uh, advanced robotics, defence, uh, even communications. But you, the government, the UK government now has a right to interfere. Well, uh, the, this is a, a big overhaul of our national security um, intent, uh, and I think it sends a really clear message about uh, our commitment to making sure that uh, you know the UK's national security and economic interests remain at the heart of the decisions that we take as a government. Um, what we have done with these new with this new uh, law is to, as you say, introduce an ability for the government to look at areas that are particularly sensitive, uh, where we think that there there could be. Um, uh, matters of, of national interest that we want to take into consideration. But for the vast majority of investments that come in from around the world into the United yep. Kingdom, they will continue to be able to flow as they do, as they did uh, you know, on the 3rd of January uh, with this new law coming in on the 4th. Um, but it does give us that those extra um, ability to protect uh, our national security interests and actually are very much in line with, uh, with the extent to which the US government right. uh, provides ability to. I guess the, we're now a year after Brexit, so to speak, and um, you're, you're getting a real view on what people, what companies, what CEOs think. Uh, your main job essentially is as trade commissioner for, 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 for the UK and North America. Are you finding companies still bedeviled, still deciding, is it worth making that investment in the UK rather than in, um, in a EU nation? Well, actually, we're finding a really strong pipeline of interest, uh, a continued amount. I mean, we already see huge volumes of investment in both directions between the UK, the US, UK, UK Canada, and vice versa. Uh, and so we're continuing to see some really impressive flows of, of direct investment into the UK right across the country as part of the UK government's levelling up agenda. Um, and that, that sort of pipeline uh, is, 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 as I say, still very vibrant, still very robust. And in fact, some of the most recent data coming out, whether it's uh, from Canada or the US or indeed the UK, right. Uh, really demonstrates that continued confidence and enthusiasm for companies uh, to be investing in the UK. And it's no surprise because you know, the government has made sure. a lot of effort to create uh, the right environments for that. Now, I was just looking online. Anthony Phillips and your predecessor, he was in post four years. <laughs> So if we now take you for the next four years to say, let's be generous, 2026, 2027, do you think that you can, that the UK can get a free trade agreement with either Canada or the United States by the time you leave office? 
Uh, that is a big question, Richard, um, and of course one that is front and centre of, uh, of my mind, certainly as I take up this role. Of course, the UK already has a free trade agreement with Canada, uh, and we're very much looking forward to, to starting negotiations on a fresh agreement uh, between the UK and Canada uh, in the coming months. Um, both, both of us are gearing up uh, to enter into those negotiations. Uh, of course, we've also got CPTPP, uh, of which Canada is a member uh, and has been very supportive of the UK. Uh, request to become a member of that free trade organization. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the big question is around the US. Uh, <laughs> and we do remain, we remain committed uh, to, to entering, to re-entering the negotiations between the UK and the US on a free trade agreement, uh, not least because we think that it's, uh, you know, it, it can really help right. to cement uh, the, the high standards that we see across intellectual property and services and labor uh, and food standards. Uh, and we think that it can help to generate more trade and investment flows. But it's not the be all and end all. So it does remain an important goal for me personally um, as trade commissioner for this region. Uh, but, but while we're waiting for, for that to happen, there are all sorts of other things that we're doing to really try to invigorate and drive more trade and investment flows between our two countries, really build on what is already the largest bilateral trade and investment relationship in the world. Uh, and that, so that is around market issues of which of course we've had some successes in the last few months uh, commissioner that we thank you we will talk more next time we'll do it over a cup of tea somewhere where we can be face to face when this omicron peskiness is out of the way we can talk face to face good to see you thank you ma'am for joining us